everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to Glasgow Airport, Monday night, 8pm. What am I up to? Well, this idea started in 2018 and I was wondering what would happen if you caught the cheapest low-cost airfare from A, flew to B and then booked the cheapest low-cost airfare from there to C and then to D, where would you end up? I never did find out because COVID arrived and the idea was shelved. But recently I was thinking about this again and I've discovered a few YouTubers have been featuring this on videos. One thing, however, these YouTubers always seem to end up in really exotic locations. For example, the ones I watched, Vienna, Budapest, Split in Croatia, Zakynthos in Greece, and believe it or not, Kathmandu in Nepal. All because of random flights on cheap fares. Hmm, don't know about that one, we're gonna find out. Funnily enough, they never ended up in places like Luton, Stansted, or, with all due respect to the good people of Dublin, Dublin. They end up in Kathmandu in places. Mm. So I'm going to find out. I mean, knowing my luck, I'll end up not in Kathmandu, but in Cardiff. I'm hoping to end up in Istanbul, but you never know. Now, there are a couple of rules. Firstly, four flights only, maximum four flights. No backtracking. And the reason why I say that is because I was once looking at flights to a place called Santiago de Compostela, which is in the northwest of Spain. You can get there really cheaply on Ryanair. The problem is there's one flight in and one flight out each day, and that doesn't make much of an interesting video. Also, I'm trying to base these fares on the cheapest fares possible. I reckon 20, 30 pounds, and I'll get away with it. But if I find fares at the cheapest point are 80, 90, 100 pounds, uh -uh, the challenge is over because I can't afford that. So I was looking at the cheapest fares, and in descending order we have Luton at £39, Birmingham at £36, Dublin at £23. You can see a pattern forming there, can't you? And then the cheapest overall, £22, Wizz Air to Bucharest. And I thought, Bucharest, £22? And that's where we're heading at 10.30 tonight. Can't believe it. That's the good news. The bad news is the flight arrives at 4.15 in the morning local time. That's around about 2.15 GMT. I'm going to be absolutely shattered because I do not sleep when I'm on the move. And it's raining, I have to watch what I'm doing here. 4.15 in the morning, yes. So by 5 o'clock I should be landside, I should be having a coffee to get me up to cruising altitude. I might be having breakfast as well. And at that point I can then plan what I'm doing for the rest of the day. Fingers crossed I go to somewhere exotic like Istanbul and not Cardiff. Right, let's get out of this rain and let's get in the airport. I'll see you when we're in Bucharest. Would you like a laugh? I've just been kicked out of Starbucks because they're about to close. And I've just realized uh, the flight tonight, 22.30, is the last flight of the night. After that, nothing until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, easy debt to Bristol. But the funny story, when I was checking in for Wizz Air, they kindly give you the option, hey, we'd like to recommend this seat for you. It was 9A and I thought, thanks very much. I'm not overly worried about the window seat because it's going to be a nighttime flight anyway. But I thought, what a nice kind gesture. Oh, by the way, it'll cost you 12 pounds. So I clicked the thanks but no thanks button, went for random seat selection, and guess what seat number I got? 9A. Right, I'm gonna enjoy my coffee, and then I'm gonna find out what gate we leave from. Cheers. And here we are at Bucharest Airport. Wiz was actually all right. More legroom than Ryanair, although when I did arrive uh, onto the aircraft, someone had nicked my seat, so I shifted them nice and fast. 
The heating on the aircraft though was so warm, it was either to make everyone drowsy so we'd fall asleep or to encourage people to buy drinks from the trolley service. But we arrived 10 minutes early. Okay, my first priority here is to find coffee and then something to eat because I am starving. And then I'll work out what flight number two is on this epic low cost challenge. Well, I didn't go according to plan. There seems to be one restaurant or one cafe here. You can sit outdoors and drink your, uh, your coffee al fresco or you can sit indoors. That's when it's open. It appears to be shut at the moment and I don't mean shut and opening later in the morning. It just seems to be closed. Otherwise, there's nowhere that I can see where you can buy coffee. So I decided to sit down and work out what my next plan of action is and I've booked my next flight. Now to give you an idea, in descending order, Copenhagen was £50 or the thereabouts, Antalya in Turkey £34, but at £14, an absolute bargain, Tirana in Albania. Wow, I have never been to Albania, but that's about to change in about seven or eight hours. Can't believe it, going to Albania of all places. Right, so uh, what I'm going to do, because there's absolutely nothing to do in that airport, I'm gonna jump on the train, head into Bucharest itself. I did that journey last year, and you end up in Bucharest North Station, I think it is. It's only a couple of euros each way. And uh, from memory, there's loads of places where you can uh, sit down, um, have something to eat, drink, whatever. So I will see you at Bucharest North Railway Station. Albania. Bucharest Airport was. From memory, I think there's a McDonald's. That'll do. I was here last year and I'd forgotten how gloomy this station is. It's not very well lit at all. But I've just done a quick recce of the station. Uh, KFC is closed, Subway is closed, McDonald's is closed, but at least McDonald's has a queue forming outside, so that's a good sign. It is quarter to six in the morning, that's where everything's shut. There are quite a few places that sell um, rolls and coffee and pastries and things, but there's nowhere to sit down, and I need to sit down because I need to work something out very important about Tirana in Albania. Right, I need to find somewhere to sit down with a coffee. Okay, before this next announcement, it looks as if McDonald's opens at 6 a.m. I've got about 10 minutes to wait. Good old McDonald's. I am book starving. All right. Okay, I've got uh, caffeine in my blood and I've got food in my stomach. I'm a happy boy now. This is what I'm doing. The flight into Tirana arrives at 1.30 p.m. And I've got two options. 
I can either then look for the cheapest low-cost flight out of Tirana this afternoon but I think it's probably going to be arriving after sunset uh, it's either going to arrive at some godforsaken airport which Ryan Air flies to like Memmingen or Frankfurt Han where there's actually no accommodation for the night or I'll end up in a city where airport hotel prices are extortionate if I'm going to spend the night somewhere I may as well do it at Tirana so I've booked a place called the Hotel Jürgen and I've booked that through booking.com it's about £46 a night and it's directly across the road from the airport building that's the plan of action oh yeah the flight arrives into Tirana at 1.30 check-in is from 1pm so the room should be ready I'm gonna have a shower I'm gonna relax gonna have a coffee assuming there's a kettle then I'm gonna go for a walk because I know if I stay in my room and lie down that's me but I want to go out as well and just suss out the, the local area because there are a couple of hotels here apparently and where you find hotels you find places to eat and I don't want to be relying on Tirana Airport because Bucharest Airport was pretty dire landside for food I can't imagine Tirana is going to be any better anyway I'm going to waste some time here and then I'm going to head back to the airport Not the quietest of places this. Yeah. Worth mentioning is the fact that I'm only going to stay at an airport property. I'm not going into the centre of Tirana because if low-cost flights leave at 5, 6, 7 in the morning, like Ryanair often do, and you're in the city centre and the buses only operate once an hour and it takes 30 minutes to get it to the airport, that's going to make it pretty hard if the flight leaves at 6 a.m. So yeah, I have to base myself at the airport. I tell you, it is cold. Surprisingly cold here. I checked the, uh, the temperature when I was at uh, Bucharest. And it was supposed to be about 14 degrees Celsius today. Not at the moment it's not. Whoa, it's cold. There's only so much wandering around a train station you can do. Then you start getting a bit bored. I've been here for about two and a half hours and I think it's time to head back to the airport because after all I've got a low-cost airfare challenge to complete so there's a train in about 25 minutes I plan to be on it And here we are back at Bucharest Airport. One thing which I forgot to mention this morning when we arrived, probably because I was half asleep, was it's a sort of a travel hack. I don't know if it actually qualifies as a travel hack or not, but it's something which I do. When I booked a flight to Tirana with uh, Ryanair, I checked in at the same time. And when you check in with Ryanair, they always give you a little seat map of the aircraft encouraging you to pay money for a specific seat which I always decline and I go into the random seat selection but what I do is I do a screen capture of the seat map and I think it's 19E I've got which is a middle seat I can now go back to the seat map which I've done a screen capture on and I can now see that the window on that side and the adjacent or the aisle seat on that side are both free of course, things can always change between now and when the flight leaves, but it gives me an idea now that I might actually have a bit more space on this flight. Okay, I take it back, sort of. In the departure area, there's quite a few cafes, but in the arrivals hall, it's like a culinary Mary Celeste. There's absolutely nothing.
progress lights are crucial. The light jacket. Pull down sharply on the up your feet bar faster at all times. I'm Jasper the Cat. I think you should subscribe to this channel because I don't want you missing out on any future videos. That was probably one of the quickest and easiest arrivals into a foreign country I have ever experienced. It took literally a minute to enter one side of the building and to exit here on the curb. One minute. And that was including sliding my passport into one of these reader, reader machines. Wow. I was hoping to actually get a, a stamp on my passport, but obviously not in Albania. And I've noticed there's lots of places in there that sell food. So that's breakfast sorted tomorrow. Hey, have a look at this. Right, I'm starting to enjoy Tirana already, and I'm literally here for just a couple of minutes. And there's the Hotel Jürgen, right across the road there. Look at that. And it's got a German flag on it. Okay. I knew Albania was on the Adriatic Sea, but I didn't realize they had palm trees as well. I did think about staying there, but it was an extra 10 pounds a night, and I thought, no, that'll help pay for dinner tonight. Right, let's get across this road, not get killed, and get checked in at the Hotel Jürgen. Right, lesson number one in Albania. Just because you're crossing on a zebra crossing doesn't mean anyone's going to give way to you. Just like in Italy, that means that you have chosen that location to die. That's all that means. And here's the Hotel Jürgen. Well, he was a nice, friendly man, Mr. Jürgen. I don't think that's his name, but we'll call him that anyway. Right, let's do a quick guided tour of the place, and then I'm gonna have a shower. Okay, we've got a very large double bed. European socket there, no USB. I wonder what the view's like, let's have a look. Well, we can see the uh, control tower. Mm-hmm. What's down here? A cupboard with not much in it. A wardrobe. That TV I'm going to be trying later on because I reckon Albanian TV will be an absolute hoot. Hello, what's down here? Um, a cupboard where you store fresh air by the looks of things. There's a very, very large, long, dark, wow, a very long, dark hair there. That must have been at least a foot long. Towels, shampoos, etc. Slippers. Now let's have a look at this bathroom. Ah. 
See, in some countries, they're not scared to have uh, switches in bathrooms, unlike the UK. Sorry about that. Hello again. Hey, this is quite big, isn't it? One bidet. How clean is this shower? Little bit of mildew in the corner there, but apart from that, oh, look at that. I wonder what that wire's for. Ah, it's the hairdryer, right? Okay. I thought I'd have a little sneaky look inside the pillowcase. See if there's any little black marks, which are a dead giveaway of bed bugs. Completely clean. Oh, thank goodness for that. This is a lovely room. What a shame I'm only here for one night. Right, plan of action is to have a shower, because boy, do I need one. Um, I've noticed there's no kettle. Oh no. Uh, no kettle, um, but we can work around that. And then I'm going to go for a walk because I want to see a little bit of the area around the, uh, the airport because I know if I lie down on this bed here, I'm going to fall asleep and we don't want that. So I'll see you in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, firstly, that shower was actually pretty good. Pretty good shower. It took a wee while for the, the hot water to kick in, but when it did, wow, it was hot. Um, I'm going to go for a walk now. It's only gone 2 p.m., so I'm going to go for a wander. I'm going to look to see where people eat around here, apart from the airport itself. Um, I'm hoping people don't generally eat at their hotels because I'm going to be hungry around about 5, 6 o'clock. The locals probably don't eat until about 7 or 8, and I'm going to look like Scotty Nomates there by myself. So I'm going to go for a walk, suss the place out, and then we'll come back, and then we'll book tomorrow's flight. I certainly can't complain about the proximity to the, the airport. Literally, it's right there. Right, let's go walking. Seventeen kilometers to the center of Tirana. This was the right choice to stay here and at the Hotel Jurgen. What a brilliant wee hotel. There are a lot of car rental places here, lots of them. So I'm guessing that is the way to see Albania, by a rental car. I went past something back there and I just got a whiff of something really nice, some food of some sort. I thought, whoa, but do you think I could find out where it was coming from? No. So I'm gonna have to go back there and do some more research, I think. Now there's an impressive looking hotel, the Hotel Zeus. Although I walked right through Tirana um, Airport, there's not really much there. It's not very big. I was pleasantly surprised at the number of coffee shops and places. There's even a KFC there, so one will not be going hungry tonight, but KFC is like not even plan B. Probably plan K, KFC. Right, let's see if we can pick up that smell again. I wonder if it's coming from the Best Western. I just went into the Best Western to have a snoop around. Very nice in there, very nice indeed. That's why it's an extra £10 per night. Um, I saw the restaurant as well, and it looks rather posh. A little bit too posh for a cheapskate like me. Right, how do we get across this road without dying? I do like Mustangs. If I rent a car here one day, it's going to be a Mustang. It has to be. Let's create a, a Ukraine number plate. How cool is that? Right. It looks as if the road up ahead is closed, or at least has got some sort of control on it because they're digging a hole in it. This is not very exciting. I'm going to head back.
I didn't actually want to head back to the airport to eat, but these restaurants I'm seeing, assuming they do open, because it is February, so it's off season. If they do open, they're not gonna open until about six o'clock. Um, it's not even three, and I'm starting to fade away. So it looks as if we're going back to the airport. I've just been through the whole terminal. Loads of places to rent a car, no shortage of them. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's a KFC there. And inside, loads of places where you can buy sandwiches and pastries, but not a sit-down meal like with a pizza and a beer. That is really disappointing. I might have to do another double check, just in case I miss something. The perseverance paid off. I found a place called Pasta Madre. I don't see any evidence of them doing pasta, but they do certainly do pizzas. An Albanian beer called Corsa. That's got a kick to it, but it might be because I've got an empty stomach. Seek and you shall find. So that's me had my Albanian pizza mm. and also an Albanian beer. Mm, not too bad, not too bad. And I've bought some souvenirs as well. And it's only just gone 4 p.m. I'm heading back to the hotel because I am absolutely shattered. My energy levels are down to about 20%. So I'm going to go back to the hotel. I'm going to relax. I'll try not to fall asleep, but I can't guarantee anything. I still can't get over this biplane. This is such a cool, cool thing to find at an airport. Well guys, I've booked tomorrow's flight. I'm not gonna tell you where it's to. I'm gonna keep you in suspense until tomorrow. But the four cheapest fares were Paris Bouvet at 23 pounds or thereabouts, Bucharest at 19 pounds, Milan at 16 pounds, and where we're going tomorrow morning, 14 pounds. What a bargain. Would you like a laugh? Of course you do. Sometimes I have trouble remembering what I had for breakfast just six days ago, but I can remember something that I read online six months ago. And I've got it down here. What have these Ryanair destinations all got in common? You ready for this? What have they got in common? Lebanon, Israel, Turkey, Morocco, Kefalonia, and Tirana in Albania. What have they all got in common? The answer is, they will not allow you to use the boarding pass generated by their app because they don't have the technology at those airports to read the QR code, which means you've got three options. Well, you've got one option. You have to have a printed boarding pass, but you've got three options. You can either bring a printer with you, but because of the less than generous luggage allowance with um, Ryanair, it may be a bit cumbersome. Two, you could go to Tirana Airport and try and find the Ryanair desk. Good luck, because when I was over there, I was wondering if there was one. I couldn't see it anywhere. But even if you could find one, would there be any staff there? And if so, would they print out the boarding pass for you? They might, but they might also charge you £55 per boarding pass. Yep, 55 big ones. So option C is find someone who can print the boarding pass out for you. Once upon a time, there was loads of internet cafes, not anymore. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure what the uh, Albanian term is for a public library, but I don't think there's any here at the airport. So I'm going to go down to the, the man on reception. He was nice enough at check-in. He might help me. He might print out my boarding pass. Fingers crossed. Well, against all odds, he said yes, and there it is. I'm covering up tomorrow's destination just in case you thought you'd be clever and try and get a sneaky look as to where we're going. He must get this request quite a lot, but 
if he hadn't have done that, I don't know how I would have gotten this printed, because like I said, I don't think there's a Ryanair desk actually at the airport. I'm gonna have a look tomorrow anyway, because I'll be going over there for breakfast. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have a lie down because my energy levels are at about 15%, dangerously low. In fact, this camera's power is actually higher than what mine is. It's at 25%, right? So I'll see you this evening. I was in bed for about three hours. I think I might have nodded off once or twice, but that is a noisy, noisy road out there. Uh, the windows aren't soundproof, so every time a, a flight leaves, fortunately there's not a lot of flights, but when a flight does leave, you can hear it and it's loud. There's sirens, there's traffic, there's revving, there's people talking. It's a noisy road out there. Hopefully it dies down uh, later in the night. Right, I'm going to have a look now at Albanian television. Maybe it's not as bad as I'd feared, but it still isn't that riveting. <laughs> Good morning everybody. That was a brilliant bed. Absolutely amazing. I like quite firm beds. I hate mattresses where you kind of sink into them. That was nice and firm. In fact, I want to take it home with me, but I'm not sure if I could squeeze it onto my Ryanair flight. Speaking of Ryanair, I was looking on their app and I thought, what happens if you try to access the QR boarding pass? Keeping in mind it doesn't work here in Tirana. You do get a little message and it says, hang on, that's what it actually says, hang on, this is not a mobile boarding pass. Please go to our website to print out your boarding pass before traveling. Precisely how you do that at Tirana, it doesn't quite tell you. It's up to you to work out. Wouldn't it be terrible if you actually checked in with four hours to go and found, oh, wait a minute, that would be horrendous. Right, um, three hours and 15 minutes before departure, I have to get all the way across the road there to the terminal building, but I'm gonna have breakfast as well. I know you can't tell too much looking out the window of an airport hotel window, but if that's anything to go by, I think I must come back to Albania. I just timed myself four minutes from the Hotel Jurgen to the front door of the terminal. Right, let's get some breakfast. I just found a little service office for Ryanair. They actually print boarding passes for you. It's only 20 euros, so I take it back. It's not 55, but still 20 euros and you've got a couple of people traveling. That all adds up. Right, breakfast. The gate's announced in about an hour, so I've got enough time for another one of these. Thanks, guys. I do like that feature wall over there. I'm still not going to tell you where I'm heading, you have to guess.
and so at the end of flight number three, where am I? Stansted. Yeah, baby, yeah. What did I say at the very start of this video? Why is it when people do these low cost challenges, they never end up in places like Luton, Stansted, or with all due respect to the good people of Dublin, Dublin. The good news is I still have one more flight to go, so I definitely will not end up in Stansted. I could end up in Dublin, or fingers crossed, I could end up in Istanbul, although it's starting to look a bit unlikely. Stansted is a kind of a hub for low cost flights, so I could in theory end up anywhere. But I'm not going to find out yet because I'm going inside, it's 2pm, I am starving, I need some lunch, then I'll find out my destiny. Okay, that's my fourth and final ticket booked. Good news and bad news. Here are the cheapest fares. Paphos at £33. How cool would that have been? Belfast at £28. Bordeaux at 20 Imagine finishing this epic video in Bordeaux. But it's not happening. My cheapest fare today was £15. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but here's a spoiler. It's not Istanbul and it's not Dublin. Now that's the good news. The bad news is I'm here at Stansted for seven hours. Why am I doing this? Because I'm following the rules. There's no way I'm going to be breaking the rules. So what do you do for seven hours at Stansted? Well guys, if you're still watching this video, you must be enjoying it. Please hit that like button and please subscribe if you haven't already done so because it only encourages me. You know, when I was talking about going to exotic locations such as Zaginthos, Split, Vienna, Budapest, even Kathmandu, you could have given me 20 guesses and I would never have guessed where I'd end up. Have you guessed where I've ended up? Edinburgh. That's what happens when you catch four of the cheapest low-cost fares in a row. You end up in Edinburgh of all places. I think part of the problem is one of my rules, and that was no backtracking. And I meant that in a literal sense from the travel industry. Don't return back to your airport or city of origin. I think if I do this again, it'll be no backtracking to your country of origin. That way, if I end up in Tirana, I won't be flying to Stansted. Maybe I will end up in Istanbul after all. Anyway guys, thanks very much for coming along with me on this adventure. And I'll see you next time. And I don't have far to go home. <laughs>